A big hello to you. It's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk and this is We're Yard. And today we're taking a look at a range of 3D printed items again. And this time it comes from a well-known company called Model U. And as the name suggests, one of their USPs is that if you come across them at shows, and they do go to a lot of different shows, you can have yourself 3D printed and they do this by scanning you. It's quite an interesting process and you have to stand quite still. So uh, when you strike a pose, make sure it's one that you can hold for a little while as they uh, run the 3D scanner around you. But it's uh, quite amazing to see yourself immortalized for your model railway. It's a great way that you can have yourself actually as a train driver, a signalman, a passenger on the platform and so forth. But they do have a huge range of bespoke figures. And I myself was lucky enough to be asked to be scanned to be included into their off the shelf range. And uh, recently I was talking to uh, one of the people from Model U and they offered to send over a load of different figures for us to take a good close look at. Now they already sent over before an O-Gage version of myself, which we showed on the Monday Club, uh, but they've sent over a double O version of me and uh, a few other little surprises as well, which highlight some of the great range of figures that they have on offer. And uh, if you want something just a little bit more unique, then this is an ideal way of doing it. They've also got a great range of farm animals to really bring some of your countryside scenes to life and also the accoutrement of accessories that really do help create a great scene. So come with me and uh, let's take a look at the range from Bristol-based Model U in association today with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. But if you want to get yourself immortalized in plastic for your model railway in any scale from N through to 112th, then this is the way that you can do it. Look out for Model U at shows. They do do all the big ones and some of the smaller ones too. And uh, if you know they're gonna be there, it might be a great opportunity to maybe go dressed up. You could be the fat controller, you could be uh, dressed as a signalman, or maybe you could go really out there and come dressed to a model rail exhibition as a stormtrooper or a Wookiee. There's so many different ways you can do it. Maybe you're gonna be a Batman or the Joker. I'm glued to the screen. There's so many different things that you could do. But uh, I'd just like to ask a huge favor before we go on with today's video. If you do like the content, do please tickle that like button share the video to social media and also consider subscribing if you've not already done so. But uh, onwards with today's review with a big thank you to Model U for sending over these items from their range. <laughs> Three D printing has become a huge part of our hobby. In fact, even I'm quite surprised at just how quickly the technology has moved on. And it just shows what an interesting time we are living in. And this is the Star Trek future that was promised from the 1960s. And we're finally here. 3D printing is pretty much the replicator. This is how it all begins. But it's really useful in the hobby for providing lots of bespoke items, no more so than Model U as a company 
who you might recognise from a number of shows where they have done um, the means whereby you can actually 3D print yourself and have yourself printed out as a model. Now they offer items in anything from down to N gauge right up to one twelfth scale if you want a figurine of yourself. Um, certainly if, if you're uh, maybe a live action role player or going to Comic-Con dressed as a stormtrooper or Gandalf maybe, then um, that might actually be quite a good thing. You can have your character uh, printed off as a figurine and lovingly painted. And uh, I should point out that uh, Tunnel Lane Model Railways do offer, in conjunction with Model U, a service whereby for a uh, an additional charge you can have your figure professionally painted but model you have very very kindly sent over a number of items which these are all in their main range so you can just order these off the peg and uh, I'm really really grateful for this because um, these um, in fact there's this and um, it doesn't have a little inlay but there's this one as well uh, we've got um, the presenters from Great Model Railway Challenge and uh, these are the poses that they did actually at the final of the event. So every single team uh, had the option of uh, having the presenters pose for a 3D scan. These were all done by Model U at the venue, uh, which fitted the theme of their layout. Now, the uh, team that I was a part of, we did Dr. Evil's Volcano Lair. So we thought that we would have Tim in his, like strapped to a chair, ready to be uh, cleaved in half by some kind of death ray. And then we've got uh, the uh, Dr. Evil pose here as well. And um, we did get gifted uh, a number of these at the event, which were then used in the filming. Um, but unfortunately, I, I didn't actually end up with any of them. And I hadn't realized that you could just order these from Model U. Um, so I'm really quite grateful. I finally got a set of the figures that we had on the layout that we built. And um, these come in a little bag there. So we've got a picture on the front of, um, of the figure. And you could imagine actually getting these printed in uh, maybe one twelfth scale. That would actually be quite a lot of detail. And that's the thing that really strikes me with these is just how much detail you you get on them. Now they come on the base here as they're uh, uh, 3D printed. They need uh, additional support. All of these quite easy to just nibble off with a pair of sprue cutters. Um, but certainly you can you can recognize the person there there's um, no question about who that is and uh, really quite impressed by that and then we've got the other presenter here because he's not sat on a chair it needs just a little bit less support and you can see that dr evil pose has really come together quite well and you've got all the folds in the clothes and with careful painting, these really come alive into some quite amazing bespoke figures. Now, these are all in the main range. Anybody can just order these up. So um, let's just have a look through some of the other figures that they've sent over. And um, I was quite honoured to be asked to be scanned at uh, the, uh, I think it was at Warley. Um, was it Wally? Um, I think it was. It's either Wally or Ali Pally. Um, I'm actually um, casting my mind back. And this is Jennifer E. Kirk. Um, just excuse the pod. Yes, um, very unforgiving for um, anybody who struggles a bit with their weight. <laughs> Um, I, honestly, I look better when painted in, but um, they've sent over actually four of me so I can have a whole army of mini-me's and it's, um, it's quite an honour to be immortalised in this way. And we did actually do a competition on the channel challenging people to um, get one of these figures and then paint it up and then we had a competition. And there were some really imaginative ways that... Uh, 
this figure was customized and you, you don't have to have them with, um, I'm holding there a fireman's shovel and pretending to shovel coal into a firebox. Um, certainly I've seen people uh, turn me into a Roman charioteer, a witch on a broomstick. Uh, there's lots of different options. And this is actually really quite impressive. So there's four mini-me's and I can just imagine um, a whole scene where one of me would be shoveling uh, earth out of a hole and another one would be shoveling it right back in. Um, but the the uh, fidelity on these really is quite incredible. I, I recognize myself and it's just, uh, wow, am I really that podgy? Yes, I guess I am. And this is back when I had longer hair, so you can see my hair tied back there. And that really is uh, quite impressive. Now, other famous names that you might recognize in the range include other YouTubers. So this is Richard Watson, uh, AKA New Junction. And uh, they've sent over one of him. So it, he's, he's like the Scarlet Pimpernel. I can never tie him down for an interview, um, but, uh, Haha, -ha. Richard, you will be on my model railway. So you can see there again, instantly recognizable. And uh, that is actually quite a nice, crisp, clean uh, molding on there. And I think uh, Richard Watson really kind of uh, uh, got this worked out. If you stand absolutely upright, then they can print you without that myriad of extra support. So I think that. Uh, one of me and him may end up firing and driving a steam locomotive here on Weir Yard. So I am curious actually, am I taller than him or is he taller than me? So I am hunched over a little bit, but uh, um, I guess we're probably about the same height. And there are other uh, well-known people from within the hobby. You can get Steve Flint from Railway Modelers, one that immediately springs to mind, but it's not all just figures. They do have uh, a range of uh, animals as well. So we've got here the Tabby Cats, and uh, no model railway is complete without some little cats. These do find their way into so many different places, either farm yards, you could imagine farm cats, station cats, signal lermans cat. So we've got three there in different poses. Really some amazing life to these cats you can see there. And uh, really, really lovely. And I think the cupboard monkey is going to have a great go at painting these up. The next one we've got some foxes. And uh, again, if you've got uh, even an urban environment, actually, you would uh, possibly get uh, urban foxes, but certainly out in the wilds of the countryside, um, you'd get them as well. And these are actually printed sort of upside down. That one is broken free a little bit from the base, but certainly these uh, do have really great definition of detail on them. We've got some farm animals here, chickens. Because these are quite small, they've um, actually all broken free from the, the base. That might uh, prove a little bit troublesome for the cupboard monkey to paint. And you can see Look at the detail on there. And instantly recognizable. These are things that you can't get ready to plant. And then just to show that there's also a great range of uh, accessories too, they've sent over some of the oil drums. And these would be a staple of uh, pretty much any industrial facility, railway facility as well, you could imagine. Um, you could have all sorts in here. You could imagine everything from uh, being um, old, oil drums that have been used for lubricants, uh, antifreeze at a depot, or even put some uh, offcuts of balsa wood into them, painted up. And you could even have um, a little brazier out of these as well. I love the way that they're, they're slightly battered. You can see that texture. And this is something that 3D printing can do really, really well. 
So um, I'm going to turn these over now to the cupboard monkey and uh, I'm going to see what she can do in terms of painting. Thank you, Jen. Well, the first thing that we did was Jen spray painted all of the models with a standard white primer. We didn't uh, try and go full hog and end up with no texture on the models. Some of the parts are more primed than others, and that was on purpose so that I could get a kind of mottled effect. What I'm really looking for is nothing to be flat colour. So to achieve that, I went over with acrylic paints. Now, Jen is a big fan of enamels, and I use enamels a lot. The Humbrol range is excellent when you're painting aircraft and vehicles and things like that, but because a lot of these were organic, I wanted for a more acrylic painted, like oil paints, acrylic paint style on them. And then another advantage of acrylics is that when you're mixing them up, you get very, very fine control over not just what colour you use, but how well that colour has been mixed, which means that when I tried to darken a blue to get jeans, I left in a little bit of black here and there for a stronger blue with black flecks. Because if you ever look at your jeans, they're different colours. So some of them have got bits of white in, some of them have got bits of darker in, and I went for that effect. So I was painting them up with the finest brush I possibly could find, and this took multiple passes. So I'd paint up the skin, and then go over the next bit with some of the t-shirt material, whatever I wanted for that. And then I would go over with the blue for the jeans, finally finishing off with the black for shoes, that kind of thing. And as a result, I've got some very interesting looks. Not all of it has worked, I'll grant you that, because some of the t-shirts have far more of a mottled effect than I wanted, so they're going to need another pass with the paints. And that's perfectly fine. If you find that something's painted wrong, you can always clear it off and start again, or you can go over it with more paint. It's a difficult process, though. I will tell you right now, if you're trying to paint in double O or N gauge, you need a room with incredibly good light and you also need a very, very good magnifying glass because you will get eye strain if you don't. I had to stop several times because I was getting eye strain and it hurt, it was painful, but the effect in the end was worth the effort. I think we've got a good look here with a lot of very interesting paints and a very interesting pattern on Jen's top she wanted. Jen was absolutely adamant she wanted her traditional striped top for her model. So I had to put that in and that required several passes. So we got the base of a light uh, pinkish purple. We've got then a darker pink and then we've got the white stripes and finally I put in some black stripes and it brings out the personality of Jen in her model form. So I was really impressed with that. I didn't uh, think that the hair on her came out too well. Unfortunately, I think one of the effects of just going for a scan rather than having a scan and then having it enhanced so that it works well in smaller scales means that there are a few points where it doesn't quite have the detail that I would like. So Jen's hair does stand out on the original model, yes, but when you paint it, the fact that she has quite light hair that's almost the same as skin tone means that it was very, very difficult to get the hair to stand out. So I'm going to have to do another pass and darken her hair so that it doesn't look like she's bald with a weird sticking growth out the back of her head. In other ones, with the shorter hair on the men, it did work a bit better because I made sure that they had random dark hair colours. But on the whole, I am really impressed because while you're painting it, you can still see the detail coming out. And it's really, really nice to just paint it up and see the detail come to life while you're doing it. I'm really impressed with these and I would definitely enjoy painting some more. So, Jan, I would highly recommend you order a few more and let's make an interesting scene. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And we do have a link down below to Model You where you can browse the full range and also find out what shows they're going to be uh, at where you can perhaps get yourself scanned as well. 
And for anybody who maybe isn't quite confident about painting up uh, any of the items, they do work in conjunction with Tunnel Lane Model Railways with a uh, figure painting service where for an additional charge you can get your figure professionally painted by Dan Everson over at Tunnel Lane Model Railways, who you might know from some of the amazing projects that have featured on the pages of magazines, and also he's the man who uh, built the Rapido trains uh, dioramas that you've seen many of the Rapido models photographed on. So certainly your figure is in safe hands if you want to pay the additional fee to be able to do that. And I'd love to know what you thought about these figures. Is it a great idea to maybe have yourself, maybe even your family scanned up and put onto your model? Or maybe uh, going down to some of these shows with uh, an outfit that you can get scanned whilst wearing and have some really interesting and fun cameos on your model railway that really uh, would not have been possible before. It really does open up the scope of things that you can do. And um, well, 3D printing, it's Star Trek, isn't it? This is this is the replicator. This is day zero on how the replicator technology gets started. And certainly what I've seen with 3D printing is that the uh, the standard of the, the print, of the resolution of the scan, is just getting better and better and better. And really, this is a technology that is here to stay and certainly adds, in my opinion, a great boon to our hobby. But what do you guys think about this? Do leave a comment down below. Have you had something 3D printed and uh, uh, put somewhere on your layout? Does it uh, have pride of place? Or maybe you're not convinced yet. Do leave your comments down below. It's always a great way of passing on your own experiences to fellow modelers. And I really do love to hear from all of you. Also, please tickle that like button, share this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And don't forget as well that the last few Monday Club Wagons are available. We've got a link for those as well. You can buy them with confidence through Rails of Sheffield. You can also head on over to Patreon uh, and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. Uh, we've also got channel members as well, which is another different great way with uh, a whole host of different rewards. And a huge thank you to every single person who helps support the channel. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling, happy figure painting. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.